So I am a stock investor and I love talking about investing in stocks. Recently, a friend of mine said to me that if I have any investment tips, those tips would be much appreciated. Stay tuned to find out what my investment tip number one is. I will also explain how to go about it in practice. And finally, I will share with you guys how I personally implement it in my investing scheme. Hi guys, how are you? My name is Kalle and I talk about luxury and finances. I don't just share beautiful things with you, but I also talk about the money behind the purchases. If luxury sparks joy in your life, I believe you can indulge in a financially responsible way. Have your cake and eat it too. So if you're interested in luxury and or finances, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. And before we dive into today's topic, a quick reminder of the nature of this video. It obviously comes with a disclaimer. So I am not a financial advisor and this video is not financial advice. It is educational and it is entertainment. It is my take on the subject, albeit more or less mainstream. When it comes to investing your money, always do your own research because only you are responsible for your own investment decisions. At the same time, I want to loosely quote Martin Parsi, a Finnish financial expert at Nordnet, the biggest online brokerage operator in the Nordic countries. So he has said something like, there is risk in investing, but it is equally certain that stock investing will build you wealth in the long run. So without further ado, let's reveal the tip. My investment tip number one is cost averaging or dollar cost averaging DCA, but let me just talk about cost averaging to make it currency neutral. Cost averaging means that you will buy stocks with the same amount of money at regular intervals over a long period of time. To be more specific, you will allocate a certain amount of money for stock purchases each month and you will make those purchases no matter what. This has widely been proven to be the most lucrative method in building wealth. No one can time the markets, that is, buy when they're low and sell when they're high. Besides, investing based on capital appreciation does not take dividends into account. To me, dividends always come first. I invest in stocks for the passive income they generate into my bank account in the form of dividends, that is, concrete money. When you cost average, you will get more shares when the markets are low and conversely fewer shares when the markets are high. But when they're low, you will get stocks at a discount and you should take advantage of that in the same way that you would buy anything that you need on sale. In the long run, this will build you wealth since the average yearly return rate of the stock market is about 8%. In the short run, it can of course be a huge dive on which I actually have another video which I will link here and in the description box below. What is more, cost averaging makes your stock purchases systematic and consistent, something that is fundamental when it comes to building wealth by investing. Next, I will tell you exactly how to implement cost averaging. You will pay yourself first. That is, put your money into investments to make your money work for you before paying your bills or any living expenses. If you don't pay yourself first, chances are you won't have anything left at the end to put into investments. According to the well-known Parkinson's law, and I quote here, Work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. The same holds true of finances. If you're not mindful about spending and managing your money at any income level, you will end up spending any amount that is given to you and probably incurring debt at the same time. Talk about lottery winners, most of whom end up broke, or many former sports and entertainment stars who somehow managed to blow up millions of dollars or ginormous amounts of money. In other words, more money is not a fix for money management problems. 
The principle of paying yourself first comes from this book by George S. Clayson, The Richest Man in Babylon, in which the classic advice is to save a dime out of each dollar, that is 10%. Now most people could save more than that, but if you find 10% challenging, start with 1% and gradually work your way up. Now what stocks you will buy with the money that you have paid yourself first is obviously down to you. If you're not that interested in following individual companies or the stock market in general, I would suggest that you get a well-diversified ETF that is short for Exchange Traded Fund. These are funds that you buy at the stock exchange exactly as you would buy an individual stock. You might pick a world ETF which follows global stock market indexes or perhaps an S&P 500 ETF which consists of the 500 biggest listed companies of the United States or then you might get a few ETFs and rotate these on a month-to-month -month basis. Anyway, in this way you will always get the average 8% return of the stock market in the long run. The convenient aspect of these types of funds is that you can pretty much forget the whole thing and automate the investments, which might be better as you won't be tempted to make any panic moves when there is turbulence in the markets. That being said, investing in funds is somewhat boring, but that's how wealth building actually is. It requires commitment to a long-term project with not much thrill or drama. In any case, let's say you have decided to invest 200 euros a month in an S&P 500 ETF. Here's how much that would compound over different periods of time. It's kind of mind-blowing how the compound effect works its magic over time. Let's say you want to build a nest egg for retirement. If you wait until you're 35 to start investing until retirement at 65, the difference is huge compared to starting at 25 or even younger and saving until age 65. In effect, time is an investor's best friend. Now, of course, you could cost average individual stocks as well. However, if you want single stocks, there should be several of them and they should come from different sectors and also be geographically diversified. In other words, not just from your own country. Someone once told me that with 20 individual stocks you're properly diversified. Nevertheless, you can't really cost average a large number of stocks on a monthly basis because the transaction costs would be too high. So you should have some kind of rotational system within which you buy those stocks at regular intervals. And lastly, here's what my cost averaging looks like. I buy one individual company on a monthly basis. I don't rotate all my companies anymore, but rather buy companies in which I have smaller positions that I want to increase. Then I buy three ETFs, two of which are an S&P 500 ETF and an FTSE 100 ETF, that's the UK market. And the third one is another ETF that goes on a rotational basis. Finally, I also buy a couple of mutual funds from my bank. The expenses of the mutual funds are higher than ETFs, but it's a very small sum and I started those mutual funds such a long time ago that I would have a hard time giving them up. There you have it, my investment tip number one, how to implement it and how I personally go about it in my investing scheme. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. And I also want to thank all my old and new subscribers from the bottom of my heart. Please drop a like, subscribe and leave a comment and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!